Good day, everybody. Right now, I am going to show you some results of the research in which the raw material were several ashes. The operation of thermal power plant with coal and or oil for, the, for electric energy production implies the generation of water vapor, especially the use of carbon as fuel production, ashes name, dry fly ash, wet fly ash, and dry button ash that are byproducts of power plants and resulting from the combustion of pulverized coal. The characteristics and uses of the ash depends on the fineness, the chemical composition, and the mineralogical composition. The objective of this work is to characterize the ashes of Plutarco Elias Calles power plant as a carbon electric plant in Petacalco, state of Guerrero, Mexico, in order to determine the viability of removing CO2 from combustion gases and reducing its emissions. Among the several ashes, the silico aluminous or porcelanic ash, also known as bituminous, is not active with calcium oxide and less than 50 percentage. The most important oxides are silicium oxide, aluminum oxide, and the ferric four rows. The pH is basic and can be higher than 10. Lignite sulfate ash with a high calcium oxide content greater than 15 percentage and are called hydraulic or active. Three different techniques were used to determine the characterization of the samples. One was X-ray diffractions, the other was scanning electron microscopy, and the last one X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. You can see the brand of each equipment used and the specification established in the measurement. In the other table, you can see the particle size of the sample we prepare. The micrograms of the scanning electron microscopy were taken with equipment adjusted at 20 kilovolts amplification X3000 and the reference line is 5 micrometers. Through scanning electron microscopy, the particle size is homogeneous of the order of 5 micrometers with a homogeneous and crystalline surface. The X-ray diffraction let us identify there is a crystalline mixture with a higher content of quartz and molite, which indicates that there are bituminous ashes and with a lower content of calcite. We see more content of calcium and aluminum in dry fly ashes samples than the other two. By using photoelectron spectroscopy, calcium 2P3 is taken for the pos possible obtaining of calcium carbonate 347 electron volts. And it is observed there is a higher percentage of this compound near the main signal of calcium 2P3.5 and, and calcium 2P.5 in the dry fly ashes. The content of C1S is smaller as can be seen in the high resolution spectra of calcium 2P3. The analysis of X photoelectron spectroscopy 
shows that the presence of calcium 1S has higher influence in the formation of calcium carbonate when it is in a lower percentage as in dry fly uh, button excuse me dry button ashes showing that by means of the elements present in the surface of the ashes being studied in addition it is observed that the, the convolution there is a shift in the main peak of calcium 2 p3 this is due to the strong interaction of C1S carbon and calcium. In addition, oxygen 1S and silicium 2P are involved in those regions of energy in which calcium carbonate coexists, which is why X photoelectron spectroscopy are detected despite the low number of accounts. In summary, the summer of calcium carbonate compound is present in the ashen, as shown by, by the X-ray diffraction and EDS studies, assuming that the crystalline structure of this compound is taken an X photoelectron spectroscopy proves that the surface is still present and the ashen there are no calcium carbonate variations. The X-ray diffraction patterns correspond of dry fly ashes and the petacalco plant predominantly in calcium oxide. As a conclusion, we see the results shows highest percentage of calcium, oxygen, and carbon in dry fly ashes respect to the other two. Dry fly ashes is viable as a filter, fin, filter in the biogas purification process. The calcium car, car, carbonate compound is present in the ashes as shown by the X-ray diffraction and EDS study as crystalline structure and X-photoelectron spectroscopy probe proves that this compound in the surface is still present. The authors express our gratitude to Roberto Isaac Juarez, Leticia Carapia, and Rafael Basurto for the interpretation and use of the equipment in this research. Thank you for your attention.